The Dr. Fazo Show is brought to you by Health Tips Media. The Dr. Fazo Show is intended for health education purposes only and complies with all HIPAA regulations. All of the CDC guidelines for COVID-19 safety were followed while filming this episode of the Dr. Fazo Show. Hello folks. Welcome to Dr. Fazo TV show of August 2023 episode. So today the topic of discussion is the obesity or weight gain epidemic in the U.S. Uh, as a U.S. nation, we are the highest uh, in obesity rate in the world at this time. Uh, unfortunately, but that's a fact. 40% of our nation is, and uh, by definition, are all obese. And we are going to talk basics about the obesity. When we say obese, yeah, we are talking about something known as body mass index. So if the body mass index is 30 or more, we call it obesity. So normal BMI or body mass index is 25. The body mass index is actually a ratio between your height and weight. So most people ask what should be my ideal body weight? That is based on your height. The weight is based on your height, so everybody have a different ideal body weight. So as I said, if you have, I mean, you can search online, there are different formulas. Uh, weightlossofjuma.com also have a formula on it. You can calculate your BMI. Uh, all the medical offices, when they take the height and weight, uh, it automatically, most of the time, calculates body mass index. So BMI or body mass index is the key in discussion of uh, weight loss. So we need to get familiar with that. So body mass index is uh, 25 is perfect. Most people wouldn't have that 25, but again, by definition or for academic reason or for discussion's sake, uh, we pick up 25. As we go above 20 uh, to 30 and above, we fall in uh, in the range of uh, obesity. And then above 40, it is uh, morbid obesity. And in my medical practice, I have found that um, weight is root of most uh, medical problems. You name it and you got it. For example, hypertension, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, joint pains, back pain, sleep apnea, gout, kidney problems, heart problems, cholesterol problems. Uh, you name it and you got it. And even some cancers like ovarian cancers, they are directly linked with uh, uh, being obese. Colon cancer also as well. So um, we are basically killing to the death. So it is actually more important to lose weight than to keep popping the pills. And that's why my focus today for discussion is weight loss. So the medical weight loss is considered when you have BMI of 30 or more plus one medical condition which might be related to um, the underlying obesity. For example, hypertension, diabetes, type two, or other condition which I just mentioned. So it's not only make you feel better, make you look good, but also make you feel um, healthier and you can get rid of most of your medication most of the time. I mean, some conditions you cannot. I mean, there have other risk factors for smoking will cause uh, asthma or COPD, you know, bronchitis, emphysema. But uh, most of the chronic medical conditions are linked to the uh, obesity. And I'm always surprised that it's such a common condition and we are being immersed as a nation into this uh, epidemic, but nobody's paying attention to it. It's probably the last discussion, you know, we call it like a doorknob question, doorknob answer. That means when the patient is leaving or doctor is leaving and have, have a, their hand on the doorknob, the patient asks, how should I eat? Uh, how, how should I lose weight? And the doctor generally says, or provider generally says, eat less, exercise more, and they walk out, you know. That does not help the patient in any means. It's like um, somebody's drowning in the water and uh, somebody's on the boat and somebody in the water and they're being drowning or the patient or person is being drowned and ask, can you help me? And the person on the board just says, hey, uh, just swim a little bit harder and then start fishing again, right? That's not the right attitude. That's not the right way to treat this problem. This is a serious problem. Now we have, I can go further uh, deep into this issue, but in, in the root of this whole epidemic, 
there's a, something we call food mafia. The food mafia is involved, the hidden calories. Try to go to a fast food chain, try to go to a um, drive through or through inside, uh, uh, you know, the front desk and try to get some food and you will always try to get a package deal, buy one, get one free, you know. They always try to push more food inside your body. Why is that? It's like first, uh, first dose on me, second dose on you kind of situation, right? Like a street thugs on the side, in the corner. Because once you get bigger, you're hooked to the food. So it's like food addiction. You're gonna need more and more food. So you, they're making a repeat customer, but that at the cost of your health. So we all talk about big uh, pharma, big tech, big other things, but nobody talk about uh, food mafia, big food, you know. <laughs> Actually, they are on the behind of all that problems. Because um, they have a lot of lobbying power and unfortunately or fortunately, lobbying is uh, all legit, you know. So they can change the laws, have the laws rewritten in, in their favorable fashion. So they become immune from a lot of things and they keep making us uh, bigger and bigger, you know. So, and there's also some other tricks. I mean, there's all, I can talk about this all day long, but I'm gonna make it simple and easy. So the idea is that I make my audience more educated about the food problems, the obesity problem, and then what they can do in their daily life to make it better. Or if you're educated, then you can know where the problem is. It's like fixing your credit score. You cannot, um, you know, hit a computer or, uh, you know, beat on the computer and expect your credit score will get better, right? It doesn't happen that way. What we do, we analyze it. We analyze it and we see where the problem is and then we fix it, right? We'll say, pay this credit card more and your credit score will go up and stuff like that. So, the, and there's all of the fine print. So you have to know about the fine print. Uh, for example, there was a law which was passed where you, by law, the food chains or people who sell food have to mention how much calories are in each uh, serving, right? That was a big uh, problem for these folks. So what they did, you know, because if uh, I put like, uh, hey, this milkshake have a thousand calories and your daily diet plan is uh, tells you only 1200 calories a day to lose weight, nobody's gonna, in their conscious mind, is gonna be comfortable in, in drinking that milkshake, for example, right? So what they did, they made a fine print. The, these guys, uh, the big food mafia, they made uh, something, uh, common trick of the hat, put like 100 calories in big bold letters, and they say from fat. And then put um, 900 calories in very fine print for which you need a, probably a magnifying glass of a higher nature to know there's 1100 calories from other sources, carbohydrates and proteins and stuff like that. Most people think um, like um, that is calorie from the fat which matters. At least the opposite. If you eat more fat, I mean, it's paradoxical. You lose more weight. And again, this is a big science, science behind it. That's why all the keto diets, they're heavily fat-based diets, uh, but they are low in calories. So it's all about the calories, the total calories, not the calories coming from fat or carbohydrate or protein, and it comes to the weight loss. Very simple math. Uh, weight loss is, is equal to uh, what you eat, what you burn, and then your uh, basal metabolic rate. Like the basal metabolic rate is another concept that means how much uh, calories are you burning without doing anything? If you're sitting in a chair, like an idle car in a parking lot, how much uh, gas is burning per hour, for, for example, or per day in that case. So higher your basal metabolic rate, the more uh, easy you're gonna burn the fat or calories or weight, and then uh, less you eat. Now exercise is a big, um, another, uh, I will call it like, um, um, uh, misguided principle in the, in the nature of the fat, uh, uh, weight loss. On the TV, you see a lot of infomercials like, you know, do 100 push-ups, do reverse push-ups, do push them one hand, do curls, this and that. You will lose weight. That's not true. Our body being very efficient, we lose very little calories when we do a lot of exercise. And that's by our genetic makeup. Back in the days when we were, you know, um, cavemen, or cavewomen, I guess, uh, at that time, um, 
Now you can catch up with all of our previous shows on all Roku devices. Simply search for the Dr. Falso Show channel and add it to your home screen. View our videos online by visiting our website at www.drfalzoshow.com. Our videos are available on YouTube by searching for The Dr. Fossil Show. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The Dr. Fossil Show is available in multiple provider office waiting rooms across Yuma, Arizona. Don't forget to get your copy of Health Tips magazine and read about this interview, currently distributed across Yuma, Arizona. Our body have evolved where we're going to, where we could use very little calories to do maximal work because the food was scarce back then. There was no fast food, there was no drive throughs there was no buy one, get two deals. You have to really hunt every day to survive. And that's why the body have evolved over the last thousand of years where you can use very little calories to do a lot of things. That's why it's so difficult to lose weight with the exercise. I mean, I can give you an example. If you take one donut for 500 calories, one donut, right? You will have to run three to four, uh, two to three miles just to lose that one donut. Now, if you eat two donuts, yeah, you, you're doing a marathon, right? So uh, most people have arthritis and other joint issues or other medical issues. They cannot do that much exercise anyway. They all indirectly are due to the weight, right? So, point I'm trying to make is that, okay, I'm not against exercise. Exercise is good for your heart and muscles and your well-being and your mental and physical health. But that's not the answer for the weight loss. The weight loss is also always about what you, amount of calories you eat every day. So, this is what you're uh, burning every day. This is what you're eating. If they are the same, then you can, you're going to keep your weight at the same levels. No. You know, a lot of uh, software online can tell you with the, your age, your gender, your height, and, uh, your, uh, and your current weight, how much calories you need to uh, take every day uh, in order to lose weight. I tell you the most of the time, I have found that if you take 1200 calories, total calories a day, forget about exercise or anything else, then you will lose four to eight pounds of, um, I think uh, two pounds per week. So that's like uh, eight pounds in a month, give or take. Most people, you know, they um, uh, worried about like a healthy diet. When they say healthy diet, they talk about vegetables and fruits. Well, the problem is they might be healthy in other sense that they might not have uh, like, you know, salt and other things in there, but they might not be healthy for weight loss because most fruits are, have a lot of fructose, which is sugar, and they are high in calories. So. That's not your answer. As I said, you, mo you actually lose uh, more fat by eating fatty food. I'm not recommending it because it has its downside as well, like high cholesterol and causing other, other uh, uh, medical conditions uh, aggravated, but just for the weight loss sake. So it's not really matters like what you eat. So don't worry about like, I'm going to eat a lot of food and if, uh, you know, uh, healthy food per se, quote unquote, to lose weight or do a lot of exercise to lose weight. It's all about total calories per day. So again, everybody's different. Bigger you are, uh, more calories you can eat to lose weight. But on 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 the if you just in the nut, nutshell, if you eat 1,200 calories a day diet, you will lose um, around eight pounds per uh, per week, and that's a lot. I mean, that's like a natural slow. Slow, slow weight loss is better than losing fast because if you lose fast, you will gain it right back because it's not sustainable. Like people do in keto diet, they eat like, uh, you know, 800 calories a day. The definition of keto diet is like 800 calories and, uh, you know, you can lose um, weight very fast. The problem with that thing is two things. First is like, obviously, it's not sustainable. I mean, that's only okay if you are having a medical emergency or you're getting like married, for example, and you want to lose weight in two months or three months because you're going to jump right back to your normal. Uh, eating habits, you know, because it's not sustainable. 
And most of these plants, food plants, are not sustainable because you have to buy them. It's not, they don't, um, they don't uh, taste well, and uh, you know uh, they're costly. They are not it doesn't fit in your lifestyle all the time. You're kind of like stuck with it. And so you can do it for a few months, and you're gonna rebound, uh, rebounds right back to your normal uh, eating habits. So you have to change your eating habits. But to change the eating habit, you have to know how much. So again, I said 1,200 calories. The question is like, how would I know um, how much is to, uh, calories in each uh, food and on each serving? Uh, there's a lot of sources on the website, on the internet. We have our on our uh, weightlossofyuma.com website as well, uh, the tools. Uh, but again, you can Google search it or, you know, there's free, free tools available everywhere, uh, which can tell you uh, how many total calories, not from the fat, total calories are in each serving. And then you have to know how many servings are you eating as well. So you have to make sure that you do all that. There are a lot of free software which you can just plug in your, in your cell phone or in your, on the computer and, uh, and then uh, add it up and eventually you will remember it. So next time, because most people tend to eat the same kind of food for a period of time. So they will actually uh, know, okay, this is 200 calories, that's 300 calories, that's 1,000 calories, I'm gonna stay away from that. Some days you can have a little bit more, but the next day you have to offset that by eating less. You know? So on the average, if you stay on that level, you should be fine. Now you have other medical conditions, you have to be careful like diabetes, you don't want to get like um, hypoglycemic. So in that way, you, if, you, if you're doing all that, you have to adjust your medication as well. So if you are actually doing a weight loss and you have medical conditions and you do qualify for medical weight loss, that means you have a BMI, BMI of 30 or more, plus you have a medical condition, most of your insurances would cover um, medical weight loss. So it's important to be supervised by a medical professional when you're doing such kind of weight loss if you have medical conditions, because if you have a hypertension, your blood pressure will drop. If you lose five pounds, even five pounds, your blood pressure will drop. So you, we will have to lower the medications as well so you don't pass out, you don't become faint, you don't faint. If you're diabetic, we have to lower the diabetic medication because it's important. And here's a very important point. Please pay attention to this point. Now, if you have diabetes and you try to cut down the calories to lose weight, your sugar drops, what happens? Um, they eat more, right? So it's a, it's a chain reaction. You are doing in a vicious cycle. You're following your own tail. What should have happened is that you should actually lower your diabetic medication so you can eat less. Uh, most um, providers would, if they're missing the point, they would actually say, oh, well, you know, make sure you're not hypoglycemic, eat more and blah, blah, blah. Then you are going back into your same uh, uh, old format, you know. Now, you know, people always want some magic uh, medication. I know there's medication, a lot of medication out there which are uh, help you with, uh, lose weight, but they have side effects. They're expensive. They're not sustainable. And we don't know what their long-term side effects are, you know. I mean, like Fenfen back in the days was a very common weight loss drug. Years later, people start to have uh, lung fibrosis, heart failures, and they have a, a miserable uh, death, you know, and the, they have to pull the medication from the market. Uh, there's a medication which will have, help to lower the, your appetite, you know, if you do a food binging or if you're depressed and you're eating too much food. Um, and there are other medications, but most medications which I have seen are, again, give you 5%, 10% benefit, and they're only uh, useful if you're at the plateau phase and you cannot do it or you're struggling to lose weight by uh, avoiding uh, by, by avoiding uh, 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 food binges and that medication can help for example uh, Zyban or Valbitron can help to decrease the food intake but again those medications do have side effects so we can use them intermittently but not as long-term goal we can use them uh, you know as we need on case-by-case -case basis um, but again you know um, when we do weight loss, or I'm, I'm sure in other weight loss centers, uh, they should check uh, obviously at the start of the point that you do not have any metabolic uh, problems like hypothyroidism. If your thyroid function is low, that need to be checked, you know. And make sure there's no other cause of weight gain. For example, swelling or edema in the legs can cause weight gain. See, remember water is also weight, right? So uh, weight is just not your fat. It is muscles, bones, um, you know, even stool and uh, fluid edema. So people who have heart failure is, is start to gain weight. That's a different kind of weight gain, right? That's, that's water. Uh, and then those patients typically, you know, with water pills, they lose 20 to 25, 30 pounds within a week, you know. So we're not confusing ourselves with that weight loss. This session is all about the fat weight loss.
right, folks? So I think uh, that will give you some kind of general idea of the do's and don'ts of uh, weight loss, get you some tools which you can search either on our website or free on on, on internet and um, or your provider can give you those tools. Uh, but uh, remember, the, f the only single thing you can do, one thing which you have to pick, one thing in your life which you can do for yourself, lose weight. Because you're gonna live longer, you're gonna live healthier, you're gonna look better, you're gonna look, look younger, and uh, you can take less medications, your life expectancy will increase, and um, yeah, and uh, that will reduce burden of the medication you're gonna use. It's all about your mental game. It's the most of the mostly it's a mind game. You know, it's not nothing hidden forces or. Um, mystical things, it is all about your mind. If your mind tells you what you eat. Remember, you cannot put, and I'm gonna ask, you know, I'm sure everybody's gonna say no. Have you ever put like a diesel uh, in a gasoline car, right? You, you'll always look three times before you put the gas in your, inside your car. So, and you can have more than one car, you can have a different car, you can change your car. So we are so careful in what you put in our cars, you cannot put a diesel in the gasoline because it's gonna mess up the engine, you know, right? But in the human body, we put everything which we like to put in our mouth and we expect that it will, you know, body will take care of it. It doesn't happen that way. Remember, unlike cars, you cannot change your body. You have one body, one life, and one yourself. So you have to be careful what you put in your mouth. What, what goes in, what goes out. Garbage in, garbage out. So it's that simple, you know. Folks, it's all about the, uh, what you eat, rest is, uh, you know, 5%, 95% of what you eat. So if you are at 1200 calories, give or take, then uh, you should be good to go. So folks, on that note, I will uh, conclude my uh, show for, the, for today. I hope that was beneficial. Uh, God bless you, God bless America. Till the next time, Dr. Father's Show. Thank you so much.